Dave with Taboo Customs. Uh, today we're going to talk about one of the things that we recommend upgrading if you plan on wheeling your Dana 30 quite a bit. So the area that we're going to be talking about improving is going to be the pinion yoke on the Dana 30. In both the stock TJ and XJ versions of the Dana 30, you will end up getting a strap style pinion yoke here. What a strap style pinion yoke means is that whenever a U-joint sits down inside this yoke, you will have small straps that go over top of the caps on the U-joint and then small bolts to actually bolt into the threaded yoke. The issue is that these bolts here in this, this strap design is a frequent source of failure um, when you're out wheeling, especially if you wheel a lot. So if you wheel a lot, we certainly would recommend upgrading your yoke to a U-bolt style. So a U-bolt style, what it will have is it'll have a U-bolt that actually goes through a clear hole that's not threaded into the yoke. It'll go through the hole and you'll actually put a nut on the back side. Overall, it's a much stronger design and it's a design that we, you know, in pretty much any of the vehicles we have will run to ensure that you know, we limit the possibilities of these small straps uh, and these small bolts breaking on us. So let's take a look at a kit that we actually have available on our website from Crown Automotive that we're going to be installing on this Cherokee. All right, so here we've got the Crown Automotive kit that we uh, we sell on our website, tabucustoms.com. Uh, the kit will come with, uh, obviously, the yoke, the U-bolts, the hardware for the U-bolts, which will include split washers and uh, fine threaded nuts, a new seal, which is great, and then it also come with a new uh, pinion nut and washer, which is also very important. You don't want to reuse your old pinion nut. So let's take a little bit closer look at the differences between a U-bolt style yoke and a strap style yoke. Here we've got an old strap style yoke and I pu pulled off some 1310 caps just to kind of show you the, the difference in the uh, retention of the the caps here with the yoke. Now one thing also to note on these newer crown yokes and then the stock yokes, this little tab here, uh, especially on these uh, stock yokes, can have a habit of breaking off and then these caps can actually walk out. The, uh, the, the crown yoke is actually a little bit thicker here, so you get a little bit more beef there to try to prevent that. Then in looking at you know how these caps actually mate into the yoke, you can see the difference here where with these straps goes over just a bolt. One thing we have seen is these straps you know can uh, stretch and then you might have a, you might not know that these straps are not holding the yoke down into the saddle here very well. You may not know that and then it gets play and momentum and then obviously you end up having breakage. Whereas on a U-bolt style yoke, obviously you can keep tightening this and it's gonna keep that pulled down in here as long as these nuts are tight, you shouldn't have uh, necessarily an issue with, uh, with that coming loose. So this here in general, is a much stronger design than the than the strap style. Now on to swapping out the yoke itself. Uh, it's really not too difficult. The typically you would need to remove the U joint from this yoke, but this U joint's already removed itself from the yoke, uh, so we don't have to worry about that. Now, if you are having obviously to go and remove the U joint from the yoke. You've got to remove these small bolts. Uh, they are typically eight millimeter. Sometimes some people will swap them out, so you may have some different sizes. They can be either six point or 12 point. One thing we definitely recommend is that whatever they are, if they're six point or they're 12 point, use that corresponding socket. Use a six point or a 12 point socket. Uh, the, tw the six point bolts, we have seen some people round those off because they can be a little bit difficult with the yoke and the drive shaft in a way to get into. So uh, we definitely recommend using that. The uh, the other thing with these is that sometimes if you have a Jeep that you wheel a lot, you wheel a lot and it rocks, uh, you may have these bolts that are damaged. So, you know, if you're replacing this, you know, you can obviously go in there with the hard wheel, just cut those bolts loose if you need to. So then the next step we're gonna do before we actually start pulling the pinion nut off is we're gonna go in, we're gonna clean up this area. Uh, one of the things that we have seen uh, is that you can get mud, if you wheel a lot, get mud packed in here. Now, when we pull this off, we don't want a lot of stuff falling into the bearings inside this pinion. So we're gonna clean it up just a little bit, try to make sure we don't get that, much, that stuff falling in there. 
did, other than just taking a lot of it off, is we also took a pick and we rent around the edge here because whenever we pull that old seal out and go to push the new one in, I wanted to try to make sure we had as, as clean a uh, start on the, the area where we're actually pushing that seal in. That, we don't, that way we don't push any of that dirt inside the uh, uh, axle as well. Now we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll look at removing the pinion nut. The pinion nut, if you go online, they're probably going to tell you it's an inch and an eighth, uh, which is really close, and, and it probably does does work. Uh, but I'll be honest with you, we found that a 28 millimeter socket, uh, at least for our sockets that we have here, will fit tighter on that nut than our inch and an eighth socket. So uh, we use a 28 millimeter socket to remove those pinion nuts. For us to take the nut off, we're actually going to use an air impact. Uh, you may not have access to that. Uh, for taking the nut off, it should hopefully work pretty well. We, we shouldn't span it, it ought to come right off. However, if the nut doesn't come off, what we're going to do is we'll go get a large uh, monkey wrench. We'll actually put a monkey wrench around here to hold this, and we may have to get a breaker bar and actually break this nut loose if our impact won't get it off. Uh, chances are that it will. And you'll see whenever we go to install the new yoke, we're actually going to use the same monkey wrench to go in and hold this yoke as we uh, set the correct torque. So the washer may or may not come off easily. i kind of leave it on there. But what we're going to do now is now sometimes your yoke may just pull off, but oftentimes you're going to need a hammer. Tap on the sides of the yoke. The washer will eventually fall out. If it hasn't already. And the yoke will come off. Now the next step, semi-optional. Obviously, if you're using the kit that you purchased from us on our website, the kit comes with a seal. We highly recommend replacing that seal because as these yokes age and the seal is there, this will start to kind of develop a bit of a, a ring. So there's a chance you go to use a new yoke. It may not necessarily seal the exact same. So if you're here, you might as well go ahead and replace that, that pinion seal. Now getting the pinion seal out can be a little bit tricky, especially with the style because there's no flange on the outside. Typically the flange on the outside, you can get under it. Maybe use that to drive it out a little bit uh, with this really, this type, you've either got to try to go in here, catch this edge, push it in to try to relieve it a little bit from the carrier, um, or you have to try to get in here and try to pry it out from the center hole. The, uh, the first thing we're gonna do is, as I mentioned, take a chisel and be very careful about this because you don't wanna get into this outer side. You just want to catch the seal, and we're gonna try to push in one spot of this seal to basically kind of relieve the seal so that we can pop it out. So we've popped the seal out and yeah, you do have to be careful whenever you're doing that but you also don't go too deep whenever you're putting that little indent in the seal, but once you get it in there, you saw it popped out pretty easily. Um, those can be a real pain uh, sometimes trying to get them out. So with the new seal, you know, you're first gonna wanna make sure you've got a clean surface around the outside. You're gonna wanna probably go in here, get a little bit of oil if there's, you know, you can get to oil in there or get some fresh oil, which would probably be better than that used oil I just sucked my finger in, which we'll probably run and get some fresh oil here in a second. Lubricate this seal first, so as you slide that pinion in there, you make sure that you don't damage this seal immediately. Um, that way you got a good start. So let's go ahead and get that oil. Installation of the new seal can be a little bit tricky because we're trying to push the seal in to a hole and you kind of got to get it going all the way around uh, without it wanting to pop out in one area. Uh, one trick to help with this is if you had a socket or a piece of tube large enough that you could press on this outer ring out here, that would be helpful. Honestly, we don't typically, well, we don't do that with the Dana 30s. We don't have the, the tool for that. A lot of other axles, 44s and 60s that we work on more frequently, we have a lot of that stuff. Uh, but for this one, we'll go ahead and we'll use a hammer 
and we'll, we'll start and we'll try to slowly get it seeded down in. Uh, one thing that can help is I would recommend taking the old nut, going ahead and threading it onto the threads. That way you get a little bit off with where you're hitting with your hammer. You don't have to worry about boogering up the threads on your pinion. Um, you definitely don't want that or else you'll be pulling that out and replacing that pinion. There you go, not too difficult, light taps with the hammer. You don't want to bend the flange on the seal and you want to get it seated until it's flush with the outer face of the, uh, the housing here. So next we can start talking about getting our yoke on. One last thing before we install our new pinion yoke, and that is with this kit, the yoke that you do get comes with a cover. Uh, so that cover we you'll typically here will cover the front, or excuse me, the rear of this housing and covers the seal. Um, debate whether you keep that or not, honestly, uh, for us. And for me, typically, I remove this. Uh, the reason is that I don't really want, you know, the seal will keep this sealed from, from mud and debris getting inside. And we're in the Midwest and we deal a lot with the mud. Uh, you know, a bigger deal with getting mud water inside is usually either through the breather or through the outer axle tubes sometimes. Uh, the seal here, for me, whenever we're going through mud, in my opinion, will end up catching a lot of mud and then forcing it up into the yoke. And we don't really want that. I don't want mud to stay back here. I don't want mud to necessarily be forced up in there. So we will actually go and remove this before we uh, install this yoke. Didn't show removing this is pretty easy. You put it in a vise like this, use a dead blow hammer. They're just pressed on. It's not pressed on with a high degree of force, so it comes off pretty easily. So now with it um, on there, um, you know, if we were, were concerned, we could have marked out where our yoke was before, but for us it's not a huge deal. We'll get things lined up with our drive shaft. Uh, we will use a dead blow hammer. Twist it a little bit as it goes in the seal, just make sure you get it you know, into the seal correctly. You don't want to damage the seal. We'll go ahead. Get that seated down as far as we can before we put our, uh, our washer in our new nut on. Here's the part where it can get a little tricky. The, and I should have mentioned this before, if you have a high pinion and doing this in a Cherokee or something that has a high pinion Dana 30, chances are it has shims for the preload here. That's the preload on the bearings and that's the, whenever you take this, you can move it, should be able to move it back and forth, spin it just a hair and that's your backlash. Now the, the drag on that, on those bearings is the preload. And I believe the preload for on a Dana 30 is like 20 to 40 inch pounds. And typically if you're doing a, a gear setup, you'd have everything out of here. You would, you would set this up and you would tighten the pinion nut based on that preload. Now, uh, with a, as long as whoever set this axle up did it correctly, uh, you should essentially be able to tighten this nut down as much as you want pretty much and, and you shouldn't affect that preload. Um, now that it's if they set it up correctly. Uh, now typically if, if that is the case then you can shoot for um, at least over 150 up to 200 uh, foot-pounds of torque on this nut. Uh, now if you have a crush sleeve type design which is often found in the lower pinion Dana 30s it is a little bit more critical because um, as you tighten this down you're going to change that preload because you're going to crush that crush sleeve more if you go over what uh, you were. Now I probably should have mentioned this before and I'll probably go back and add it as a text to the video. If you do have a low pinion design we recommend measuring the torque it takes to take the nut off and then you can try to emulate that torque as you put the new nut back on. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to install our washer and our nut. We are going to use our impact to go ahead and just run the nut down. Um, but we're not going to crank on it with the impact. We're going to use our torque wrench. Uh, we're going to get it up to at least 150 uh, foot-pounds. See where we are at uh, with what we can feel with the preload. Uh, then we're going to add to it from there with tightening that nut up a little bit more uh, just to make sure that it's not going to go anywhere. Now these nuts that we're using, and this is why it's important to make sure you use a, a new nut. These are lock nuts. You'll see that there's little crimp marks on the edges of this nut, which typically indicate that it's the nut. And if you look at it real close, you can kind of see that it doesn't exactly look like it's uh, completely round when you look at this, which indicates that it is a, a nut, a locking nut itself, which is why you don't want to reuse those. So we'll go ahead and we'll get this nut installed and uh, start getting up to our correct work. Okay, so for torquing the nut down, one of the uh, most difficult things is trying to hold the, the yoke in place. So what we'll actually do is use a large pipe wrench, pull this around, make sure we get this to where this pipe wrench fits really snug on our yoke. And then you can use the frame of the vehicle to actually hold this pipe wrench as we go ahead and tighten the nut down farther. So right there with our torque wrench, we're at about 160 foot pounds. What we're gonna do is we're gonna check. And so since this is a, uh, a shim type preload, you know, we, we really, we still have, you know, you can feel a little bit of drag, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add it a little bit more torque in about five pound increments to increase the amount of torque on here up to 200 foot pounds just to make sure that we have that nut torqued down correctly. With the new nut torqued down, we can uh, usually go back and now install our drive shaft back on the yoke. Unfortunately, we don't have our new U-joint in just yet. We've got to go see where that's at. It's supposed to be in today and it's not here. But what we will do is we can show you here. So as we install these, obviously we would put these U-bolts in, put the lock washers and the nut on the back. Now there's no real torque spec on uh, those nuts on the back. Now all of this is grade A hardware, so you can really only get a end wrench on there. Uh, so it basically go as tight as you can with that end wrench. Uh, essentially, uh, you can also, we would recommend going ahead and, and for us, we will double up on that lock washer because we don't really like lock washers and we will use some uh, red Loctite on there as well just to make sure that those won't come off while we're out wheeling because this is something that does uh, vibrate and move uh, an awful lot so you don't, definitely don't want that. That'll do it for this video here on the installation of the U-Bolt style yoke for the Dana 30. Uh, as I mentioned you can purchase this kit off of our website tabucustoms.com if you have any questions or comments, you can uh, ask us here on YouTube, or you can also contact us on our website, uh, Facebook, or Instagram. Thanks for watching.